Hello there, Wargamers, and welcome to today's Adeptus Titanicus Battle Report. Luca here from MiniWarGaming.com, joined by Tim, and we will be changing it up because Tim's forcing me to, as he's playing Loyalists, so I have to play Traitors here. I will be playing the Death's Heads, this is Josh's army, against the Warmongers in today's 1750 Battle Report. Let's take a look at the Death's Heads today. Now, we're going to be running an Arcus Battleline Maniple led by a nemesis warbringer here and then because we're playing the arcus battle line maniple we have to have a lot of warhounds right because they they interact well enough together that's the whole idea of it they they provide a line of sight for the nemesis warbringer now we're running two squadrons of warhounds here and all these warhounds are going to be upgraded to have the remains of the fallen now the squadrons here we have one squadron of turbo laser destructors and plasma blast guns and one squadron of Vega, vulcan mega bolters and plasma blast guns and then we had some points left over, so we added a Reaver to the list. He'll have a Carapace Mountain Turbo Laser Destructor, a Fusion Gun, and a Reaver Chain Fist. Then uh, we had a few 25 points left over on him, so we decided to go with three times hardened casing on all the weapons, increasing the armor of them, and then a Bastion Shielding upgrade on him, just to kind of once per game push his shields without having to worry about it too, too, too much. And that should cover our our death's heads list today. Let's go take a look at the warmongers. So for the warmongers today, we start with a Venator Manipole, which has the Reaver Titan and the two Warhound Titans. The Reaver is my Princep Senores with the Mechanicum Born uh, trait, uh, which allows me to reroll one repair dice in each damage control phase. The two Warhounds are both armed with Mega Bolters and Volkite Eradicators. To support the Venator Manipole, we have a Warlord Titan, who also has the Bifold Power Containment upgrade. Further support, we have a Knight Steerix banner of four knights. All of them are armed with the Siege Claw and the Volkite Shero Vial. And supporting them, we have a unit of six Knight Armagers, each armed with Reaper Chain Glaives and Thermal Spears. Play and call it work. For today's match play mission between Tim and myself, our deployment, we got lines of battle. Very basic. We deploy six inches away from the edge of the board. We're evenly spaced out here. And uh, we stagger our deployments. Now, the objectives that our maniples have drawn up here, uh, we both got engage and destroy. But my second option was Retrieval, and then Tim's was Glory and Honor. Now, Glory and Honor against the Man of I'm running, not a great idea. So he went with Engage and Destroy. And because I see we both got Engage and Destroy, and I knew he was going to be taking that, I decided to go with Retrieval to keep it interesting. So we both have different objectives here. And being Mortis, I should be able to achieve that rather easily. But I have to find a fine balance in between accomplishing that and then saving my Titans. Other than that, though, whoever gets the most victory points at the end of uh, four to six turns will be the winner. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and get this game going. All right, here, take a look at the board that we have set up for this Titanicus match here. We have a mat from Table War, as well as a bunch of terrain from GameMat.eu. And Urban Mat, that one's from Urban Mat. These are from GameMat.eu. Uh, just a silo, uh, location of where large ships come flying out uh, from under the ground. Uh, we have a lot of printable scenery on here as well. We're going to be playing this as difficult ground. All those will be difficult rounds, so it'll be harder to move through and uh, whatnot. And then the rest will just provide line of sight blocking and different degrees of cover. We've deployed our Titans. I, uh, we kept, so Tim put down the retrieval objective directly in the middle, not knowing what side I'm gonna be taking if, if I win or lose the roll. So we kept it safe right there in the middle. And then left right on mine, I have my Reaper. Uh, two Warhounds, this is the Turbo Laser and the Plasma, and then we have the Vulcan Mega Bolter and Plasma, and then our Nemesis Warbringer way in the corner. Knowing that, like, Glory and Honor would have this guy way back here, that's the main reason Tim didn't want to take that one. Uh, Engage and Destroy being a little bit easier. And then on Tim's side, we have Warhound, Warlord, Reaver, the two Knight Banners, and then the other war, uh, Warhound over there. Uh, not knowing who's going to be going first here in this first turn, uh, Tim deployed first, I deployed second, so that means he gets the D10 roll, I'll get a D6 roll, and uh, this game will last four to six turns, like I mentioned, it's kind of random, it could abruptly end on turn four, but it's not likely. If you didn't kind of catch what I said, my goal is to get this and get it off the board for 20 victory points, and then I get 
points for killing enemies, and then Tim just wants to kill my stuff. And then his secondary, and then the other part of engages the story is kind of keep at least half of your titans alive in a, in a way, scale, ha keep half your scale alive, I believe, something like that. So save face and not lose too much while killing the enemy out completely. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we've already picked our strategies and everything, we're good to go there. I guess like it won't be a surprise. This guy is gonna be a veteran princeps as uh, one of his upgrades. And then the other four points are kind of secret, though I discussed it with uh, Tim. I took a blade of armor as well. I'm probably gonna pop it right away just so I don't have to worry about it. And uh, it'll be on the reaver here, I guess. Uh, yeah, just because it, for me it's easier, I'll pop it probably right on him at the beginning of a phase. I know I could use it like on any of these guys over here. It's kind of weird how it works. I figured it makes more sense to have to upgrade a Titan with it, but it says use it at the start of any phase when you take damage. So I won't worry about it. This guy will have a blade of armor. So if he takes critical damage, he'll be good to go. But forget that a blade of armor. I don't like how it mechanically works. It's like a weird trap card thing. It's like a weird gotcha one. Like not that it's a gotcha one, but it's I like to me, I write it and I thought it'd be something you had to use right away and just like say, this Titan's upgrade with a blade of armor, but it's something that all the Titans are kind of equipped with and you pop it whenever you want. I'd rather not worry about that. Screw that defensive crap. I got something more interesting to use later on. Other than that, though, we are good to go. So let's go into battle round one for Titanicus stuff. Uh, oh, we have the, we have the roll. I got a, oh, I get a D10. You get a D6 roll. Aha! I got a four. Wait, no, I do the other way around. I roll a D6. I got, you still beat me. I got a six. <laughs> it won't matter because I got the, the March of the Dead stratagem. So we're going to go into the first strategy phase. I'll declare March of the Dead. And I automatically give up the first round to Tim and the Loyalist. But every Titan gets to make a move right now. Uh, but I can't boost their movement, nor can I boost their turning. I just have to do a move. So I'll show you where they all end up. That's three of my command points, now strategy points. That's good because it's really powerful and I don't have to remember to use them later. Move forward six, move forward their eight, and then we move forward your uh, eight over here. And we kept the Nemesis Warbringer back here because he doesn't need to move much. He's gonna be a backline fire support. Command phase, what's the plan? Okay, uh, Warhound over here, full stride. Good luck. Uh, yeah, five plus. Nope. That's and a four. That's and it. command phase done. Oh, you didn't really need the command phase, I assume, anyways. So we're going to go over to my Warbringer over here, and we are going to try out a first fire order. He is the veteran, so he passes on a seven. Put first fire behind him. He don't plan on moving, like, at all this game. And then other moves. Hmm. You believe I'm going to attempt a full stride, not on the squadron, just on this Titan over here. Uh, just because, uh, full stride. <gasps> we got a two. We fail. Okay. Ah. That's, a, that's all I really wanted to do, I guess. Okay. Well, he tried. Strategy done. We go into movement. Uh, for movement, we're going to do a quick before and after because it's not going to be too impactful. So this is kind of what the board looks like right, a, right for now. But we're going to start with Tim's movement. Okay, so here we are all moved. I wanted to show the first fire off, so I saved that for last. So to give uh, some of the move orders, this guy moved there, didn't really boost. I counter moved with my Warhounds over here, but we boosted both their movements. And uh, I kind of wish I was recording this one because it's kind of funny, but double hot, double hot. So they're both in the orange right now off of that boosted move. Tim counter moved by the Armagers moving forward. And then I proceeded to move uh, my Warhounds over here. I had to boost his movement to get within an inch of the crew. Uh, he didn't, that's actually, that's Tim's there. He only got one level of heat, it wasn't too bad. And then he used his uh, two, he had to turn a little bit to get there and then turn, turn to face this way. And then this guy here turned, moved, turned, moved, turned to face that direction. Didn't boost any of his movement. And then you counter moved with the Warhound. He got a little hot, not too bad though. This Reaver boosted forward, it was free. And then that Warhound boosted forward, it cost two. <laughs> so he's in the orange as well. And then I'm not, I can't remember what that reaver, he just moved forward, but I don't he know if he- too hot as well. He got, oh, he got two levels of heat as well. Ooh, man, our engines are running hot already. And then I wanted to resolve the first fire here with the Quake Cannon, uh, because that's the only thing that really matters. We're gonna fire it, and we're gonna try and level up some of the, these knights over here that are uh, blocking the gap. The Quake Cannon has got a pretty good 45 degree arc. We're gonna fire it over this way, right on top of this knight's head. We draw a line of sight from these guys. But this is going to be negative two to hit. I was just double checking the mana pool rule. It's any time he goes to fire, not just in the shooting phase. So we don't have line of sight to the target. So it's negative two to the hit rolls. So we're hitting on fives. Let's see if we get so lucky. That is a direct hit. <laughs> yeah, we'll go right on top of that armature there. So it's going to cover all the armatures and probably only hit one of the knights. Yeah. Um, yes, we got six hits there and one hit on the Strix. Fancy forge world knights. Okay, I'll do six armatures in the banner. And this is a strength nine hit. What kind of saves are they looking at? 
Oof, that is gonna be seven six up saves because of uh, it's the one direct hit on that poor armature there, and then his five honored friends are getting hit as well. So naturally, we don't make a single save. Oops. Uh, okay. <laughs> now I roll seven armor rolls. Uh, the ones are superficial, we know that. Yep. So these are four devastating hits and one critical hit, unfortunately, because of strength nine to the, uh, the only need nines four, to do direct hits. Two. Oh no, dude, <laughs> they all die. Because like yeah. each, they only, they only have two pips, so each devastating hit kills one, because they start on the first green one. So they only live on a direct hit. And then the critical pops one and then applies the same thing as the devastating, so it kills a six one. I mean, I rolled a five to hit, I guess. I got really lucky. They're not expensive. They're like a fraction of the army, but I think. And then we have one save on these guys. So there's four of them, and it's a strength nine hit. Okay, so I got a six plus. Six plus. Ah. Oh, nice. Right off the sh uh, ion shield. Boom, no damage there. Okay, that was our first fire. That's going to bring us to damage control. We have to go to our titans in the orange. That's We have one warhound there, and my two over here, so we'll resolve yours first. That's uh, D6 because he's in the orange. Yes, sir. We got a three. We love that. That's void shields collapse. So he's right in front of a reaver with a fusion and turbo laser destructor and no void shields. <laughs> Woo! As fun as that was for me to watch Tim suffer through, I got to do these guys. So one or two is a strength nine hit to the body as the, the reactor overlords. Uh, a six is a severe one, so it's like D3. And then I believe two and three is my void shields collapse. So the first guy, okay, he takes a nine, strength nine hit to the body. That's not going to do anything too bad. This guy here uh, loses his void shields. So his void shields collapse and he takes a strength nine hit. So would you please be so kind as to roll the damage. Uh, so that's a strength 13 hit to the body. A devastating hit from the leak. Uh, his body is now structurally compromised at plus one, so he's a little not so great. But he's got voids. <laughs> he's got voids. Then we can do damage control. So we're gonna go ahead and tell you what happens here. Nothing's too interesting uh, other than the void shields coming back up online. But I'll show it off because a lot of you probably have the talent of being able to keep up with what's going on. So we'll, we'll show it all. So, we'll, but the back and forth won't shouldn't matter here. So we'll go ahead and do yours first. Okay, hot warhound. And because of his legio trait, the warmongers get to reroll ones in the first couple rounds here. Yep, so, so that's nothing. But the shields can come back online. So, uh, or you could vent heat. <laughs> so the second legio crucius trait, that six could vent two plasma instead of one. Oh. Or I could bring back the void shield. I'll let you think about it while I go over the fact that this guy killed a night banner. Uh, my legio trait only works on titans killing titans, though. Night banners don't matter. Yep, so elected to bring back the Void, because um, best case scenario, he survives the two laser blasts from the Reaver, and then the Melted Cannon just goes against the Void Shield instead All right. of my actual body. <laughs> Fair. Right. Rolling with the Warlord, just got a little heat on him. So. Yeah, just a little heat. So he is, okay, you can reroll the ones? Oh yeah. Because you're a Legio trait? Wow, I just said that. No, nope. okay, he's just gonna keep that heat. He said those those servers suck. He's got yep. oh he oh he's not in the orange. He, he doesn't get orange on two levels of heat. He's still in the yellow. Yep. So he's gonna vent some heat too. Okay. So I gave him the augmented servitor clade, so he ah. has four. Four dice. That's two of your uh, stratagem points on that one. If anyone's curious, it's a good upgrade. Uh, all the heat's gone. You can reroll the one if you need to. But okay, okay. wow, look at them go. <laughs> that warhound's fine. And then on to these warhounds here. Buddy out front is fine. Yeah, actually, no, he's got vent heat. So he's going to vent some heat. He's in the yellow. This guy over here is going to bring his voids online and vent heat. Uh, that's all done. Then this guy has some heat because he had to push his motors. He's got no heat on him now. This guy got to push for free as well. And that one didn't push. So that's why they don't have to roll. And the nemesis is fine as well. That will conclude damage control. We're on to the combat phase. So where are we starting here, Tim? Uh, starting with the little guy over here. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll go. Yeah, we'll do Mega Bolter first. Ooh. To the reaver. Makes sense. Front. It is not within eight, so no plus ones to hit. So these are hitting on trees, but six is a rapid fire. So we have two additional so two additional hits on top of all of that. Put power to the shields because that's eight hits, and it's free. <laughs> and threes. Rerolling the ones. Hey! Free! I actually hate these mortis guys because I feel like Josh's rolls nothing. Like, they're like they got plot armor, dude. Yep. Okay, so. They FAQ'd all of the little Volkite Eradicators to have the beam trait. So it fires in a straight line and automatically hits the first target that's underneath that line. So it's going to fire the beam trait. But it's draining. But it's draining. So <laughs> he's Let's... already in the orange. So... Whoa, what are you doing to me here, dude? You could have like pushed him. Oh, he's a case. Is he? 
Is he, he in the red now? He, no, he's no, in the last second, orange. Second last orange, I gotcha. So it's a beam weapon that automatically hits, and, but it's an automatic hits equal to the actual hit rolls of the like the amount of shots the weapon would have, because it would normally have three Volkite shots, or it could do a beam that has three automatic hits, but it, it increases the heat of the Titan to do so, because the, the, the reactor puts more power into the weapon. Now, in this case, uh, it's got the Void Breaker trait, which in increases the amount of hits by two on shields. So it's got three hits from the Volkite, but plus two because of Void Breaker. So we have five saves on the shield here. And I'm going to push his reactor to, uh, because why not? Hey, it's free again. Uh. <laughs> it's free for life. So five saves uh, with the reroll. Uh, okay, still hit two levels of shields there. The reroll have uh, four up shields uh, left. He's got two levels of shields. We are going to mosey all the way down to this side of the table and we're gonna fire everything from these Warhounds into these Knights. With the Plasma Blast Guns, uh, we are gonna put them, they're all pretty, they're all, they got knocked around a little bit, they're all kind of evenly spaced out so it's hard to tag multiples of them. So we're just gonna be hitting like one of them. Uh, we'll put all the shots on him in case it scatters further away. I'm gonna declare maximal fire too in case I get lucky with a couple of these because why not so we're gonna go ahead these only hit on sixes though because we're negative two for shooting through like, that's 50 percent coverage for sure uh shooting through this uh warhound here and then we're over eight inches away so that's a further negative one so the first guy we get ah oh, got a little greedy there oh, I should probably resolve these one at a time so that's the first one they both miss so I got to scatter them I put them back into the orange the first one scatters the d10 so it'll be a one inch scatter so it'll hit just each of them once because it's not directly on one of their holes. And the second one will be a five inch scatter somewhere around here. Poof. So we have two strength, oh. two, two strength 10 saves against them. Yep, so I don't get an ion shield against strength 10. And that means we just need two ups here. So we have two 14s. 14, 14, That'd be two devastating hits on them. So one of them does get dropped, eh? Boom. And then we'll do the second shot into the same target there. Uh, these are six to hit, maximal fire. Ooh, that's a direct hit. So that's two hits on him and one scatter. And the scatter, uh, that's four inches, probably missing. It looks like it's gonna go like skirt right past him. Land, it's probably land even further than that, but that's good. Boom, it'll crash there and make a big crater there. But we have two, uh, I guess no saves. Nope. That's strength 10. So it's okay. Oh my gosh. Ooh, 15, 16. <laughs> Critical takes one out. And then one, two. And it takes and out another one, eh? Goes around, so. Okay. I assume that's a scion. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It says each time a knight is removed from the banner, it has to do a shake and check. So they have four. command of, uh, oh, six, yeah. So it's got a four of command checks. So it's got to roll three times, I guess. Yeah, First one He's passes, good. second one passes, and the third one passes. Okay, they're all good. Uh, I'm going to probably, oh, I still want to put the Vulcan Mega Bolters into that guy. Gross. Yeah, I'll do the Vulcan Mega Bolters <laughs> in this guy over here. This one's going to be negative one to hit for the rocks in the way. This one will be in the open. So the one at negative one to hit on fours, we have uh, five hits. And then we're gonna push his voids. Voids. Oh, but do they? <laughs> What's he gonna do instead? He's gonna take some heat and he's gonna pass. Okay, he just takes heat and pushes his void. Just rerolling ones. Five dice, rerolling the ones. We have two rerolls and we take no shields. Very good. Now we have six following up and threes. Sixes are good. So we have uh, two more hits on top of that. So you have. Uh, eight saves. We're gonna push those voids. Voids? Question mark? Uh, oh, hey, another one! <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and roll that and we pass. Uh. And then his heat goes up by one. And then still rolling saves though. Now he is a friend of the orange. That's where he lives. A lot of Vulcan Mega Bolter shots. And we pass one reroll. Uh, the two. Uh, can you reroll the two or just the ones with the. Yeah, there's a two okay. in there. Yeah, you're good. And the reroll. It helps, so he only loses one level of void. Yeah. Well, that's it for that squadron attacking. I forgot that this guy was supposed to pick up this model at the end of the movie phase. It was all part of the plan. Nothing changes. And then we go to the Warlord firing next. What do you think the targets are going to be? Uh, the Warhounds. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> They're kind of out there in the <laughs> open. Uh, this is a daring mission for them. All right, what gun do we start with? Um, let's see. We go with the Volkite Destructor first. Are you gonna fire the beam profile of it? I think I'll fire the beam profile. So nice. What's the range of it? it just goes 24. all the way. Twenty-four. Yeah, so it'll. The way this works also with beam is if this one somehow miraculously dies, this one automatically gets hit by the beam as well at like one less shot than the profile says because it has already used up some of the energy on the previous Titan. Draining, and it's a little hot. All right, and then it's it's three hits normally. Yep. So five against the shields there. Have him push the reactor to reroll these a little bit. I just can get in the yellow and three up. Reroll the ones. And one level of shield down and he'll take it. 
Uh, next up is the paired Gatling blasters. Any bonuses or negatives here? Uh, twelve shots. All right, that's weird. They get plus one to hit within eight, but it's a it's a carapace weapon. Can only ever fire. And it's for the reaver because it's the reaver weapon, so it yeah. gets plus one to hit at eight. So that would never get the plus one, I guess. Well, that's... If he's fighting other warlords or the war master, I guess the scale of them is big enough, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that works. That works. Yeah, <laughs> hitting on threes. Point blank, a war master. Yeah. Boom. Any rerolls? Oh, we got some misses, some hits in there. These are ordnance normally, but these are just against shields. So that's five, eight saves. We're gonna boost the shields this time from this guy. <laughs> Free! <laughs> and he'll be taking the shield saves uh, because he still has a three up. Oh no. <laughs> then the bigger Gatling. Last is the bigger Gatling gun. All right, same idea. Six shots. We have a couple misses. Yep. Five, four saves. Well, it was free, so we'll boost it. Actually, we'll use his power to boost. No, we'll use his to boost it. Oh no, not free. And then we'll use his shields. Okay, didn't need it, just cost, cost a seat. Let me go ahead with the Warhound. This one has no targets, so they're gonna fire together. Uh, we're gonna put the plasma blast guns into the Warhound facing them. And uh, we're not gonna bother with maximal fire. The first one on fours, or the, sorry, it's gonna go directly on the middle of his base. So actually, no, we're gonna put it even further back just in case it scatters more towards that weird knight. So just as long as it fully covers, they're both, they're both gonna scatter though. I'm gonna shot right over there, and then it's gonna scatter two inches. That's funny, it lands like almost exactly right there. And then the second scatter is gonna be nine. That's like oh, way over here. <laughs> close though, you know what? Real close, buddy. And the second volley, we're looking for fours to hit. So that's oh, four saves on the shield. All right, no boosting, just four ups. And we pass all of them? Oh, our voids are yeah. great today. That's awesome. All right, Tim is gonna do the Warhound. Warhound into... Probably this Warhound yeah, here. Yeah, probably that one. It's clean shots. Yep. The Vulcan Mega Bolter will be hitting on threes, but with rapid fire, we have... Oh, nice, it's six hits. He's not gonna boost it, he's just gonna take the six voids. Okay, good thing he didn't boost it. He loses one level. He's got four up void, four up void. Oh, we're gonna go draining. He's already in the first level of orange on the beam weapon. I like it. Bold. Uh, okay. All right, not bad. So it's five more void saves. I'm not gonna bother boosting it. They're, they're already gonna be suspicious enough. Ah, uh, do I? No. That's a, oh, actually, it's a good thing I didn't. That was a hypothetical roll. So we take two levels of shield. I'll, I'll divvy between the two of them. So they'll both have one level of void left. And then me, I get to go. Uh, we're gonna go with this reaver firing everything into that warhound. We're gonna go ahead and do draining on the turbo laser destructor. Ooh, maybe not. Maybe we'll do something else instead. We pass, we pass. Okay, but we're still gonna take a level of heat there. We're about nine or more inches away, so I can still fire this. We have a hit. So that's one save on your void at a five up because of draining. This could make or break it. Oh, it didn't matter. Okay, so we popped the voids and then we fired the fusion. So we the melted cannon with the fusion rule. And we are in half range. So it's a single shot. Eh? We're gonna put the blast right in the middle of his feeties and it's uh, two hits. Because uh, it's fusion, it uses d10s. So we have a seven and a four. I think it's strength 11? Yep. Yeah, so it's 15 and oh wow. Okay, 18, so that's obviously a critical. Oh, I gotta do the location, sorry. Forgot about that part. It's gonna be the leg. Okay. That is a double critical to Warhound legs. So his legs are moderately compromised and his locomotors and stabilizers are damaged on him. So he's got to turn randomly at the end and there's something about, I can't remember what the other effect is. Yeah, so it's half movement and half maneuvers rounded down. So now he moves four and six and he has a, uh, uh, to one turn he can do, and then he can boost it to two turns. <laughs> Good job, Reaver. That's why you're a veteran. That's it. And we still have your Reaver to resolve. My my Warhound's voids are pretty heavily damaged. This uh, reminds me of the last retrieval game I had. Warhound. So we're gonna go draining on the beam into this guy here. Yep. Heat. And heat, a little hot. Still in the green, good old safe Reavers. And then that's uh, five saves on me. Yep. Let's just not, let me double check something here. If I don't have to merge the voids, I don't want to, because this is gonna pop it and I want to be able to merge the voids on the next shot. I don't know if I can manipulate it that way though. Yeah, so it's uh, every time they're attacked. So I'm gonna assume that's from the whole, I'm gonna actually assume that that's the entire Titan's attack. So I can't be like merge on this and not merge on the other one. So I have to either merge now or not merge. So I'm going to, oh gosh. If I could just save one of these shields, I'm, I'm gonna merge and then boost probably. We're gonna boost it on the turbo laser guy. Ah, oh, geez, he's gonna take a lot of hits though. Let's see here. Ah, oh, we're gonna boost it on you, I guess. Okay, he gets a little heat. Yeah, so he goes to the orange and then we have four ups. Ah, oh, you got him anyways, okay. So it wasn't worth it because they only have one level of each. So they collapse. We're gonna do the melt cannon first. I assume we wanna do it right in the middle of his base there. Yep. Should be no negatives to hit, so look for a three. 
That's a hit. That's two hits, and we are definitely within 12. Within 12, so Fusion will trigger two D10s. So that's a three and a two. So that's going to be 13 and a 14. And we've got the location dice. It's to the leg. Nice, same spot. Volcano Cannon. That's two devastating hits to the leg, so it's moderately compromised there. And then the Volcano Cannon. Single shot, same area. It's draining, though. No. Oh, it misses, but then it's, it should be draining as well Oh yeah. on top of that. Uh, so a little bit of heat, and then we have to scatter it. And it scatters ooh, eight oh. further, further eight inches. So it's going to land around this area here. Yeah. Explode there. Okay. Okay, so we survived that. Huh. <laughs> Let me tell you, Titan warfare is stressful. It's, I would hate to be one of these crews. This is horrible. Imagine during the Great Crusade, when you're just going around the galaxy, literally bullying all these races that don't have Titan level weapons. And you're like, ah, whatever, this is easy. Like, <laughs> just, you know, approach things calmly and carefully. Then he's like, Horus Harris is like, oh crap. <laughs> Volcano cannons. We're gonna we're gonna lob the volcano cannons up and over this rock and the quake cannon on top of this warhound. We're gonna aim all of them on this tuft right there on the back of his base, and we're gonna be drawing land from these two honored friends here. Now we hit on five. So we'll start with the quake cannon, and naturally two hits. <laughs> so he should have two uh, two four up saves. He still should have like uh, only one level of voids down. He's got he loses one of them. We we'll fire the first volcano cannon, a little bit of heat, and then I'm just gonna roll the second one. Okay. All right, can we get so lucky on a five? You better believe we have two hits on that Warhound. <laughs> two saves. Are you thinking about boosting? You only got one level left? Aren't you in like the orange are? Oh yeah, yeah. He, if I take a heat, he goes around. But you don't want to get hit by the other volcano cannon, eh? Yeah, at this point, all he would do is blow up that. Yeah, I'm gonna boost the reactor. All right. Hey! So boosting the reactor, free. So you have uh, rolling ones here. Uh, okay, how about your voids just go down completely? And then the second one, you better believe that's two hits with the Bellicosa Volcano Cannon on no voids. <laughs> what? Sorry, it's not Bellicosa, it's just a regular Volcano Cannon. So strength 10s, uh, special, so that's your body. Uh, body. So that's nothing and a 15 on body. Hooray, it's a critical to the body. Woo, it's a reactor leak. I don't, um, I don't think Volcano Cannons were ever meant to be lobbed. They're like an energy weapon that shoots straight. Yeah, so it's like, laser beam. After that, the last thing to fire is this Knight's uh, Steerix or Strix. Uh, he's got a, looks like he also has a volcano weapon, a fiery in my warhound here. Volkite, yeah, Vol Volkite for sure. The Volkite so, Shivanod. The Shivanod, sure, absolutely, for sure. <laughs> what's, the, what's this bad boy do? Because it also have the beam? Uh, no, because it's a knight, I don't think it has enough power for beam. I guess, beam. yeah, that, that's fair. So, yeah. actual rolling. What does it hit on, threes or fours? Threes. Oh, nice. Does that have the shield bane as well? Uh, Voidbreaker of Void one. So it's three saves. Okay. We're just gonna take it on the, we're not gonna merge voids on this one, just on the Vulcan Megabolter guy. Oh, four, three, and a five. Yep. And that will conclude the first combat phase. We already have a crap ton of critical damage to resolve. That guy's gonna have a reactor leak. This guy's gotta randomly turn. For my guys, uh, they have plot armor. Yep. <laughs> so they're good to go. Yep. Let you roll for his stabilizers. On, it goes on one to three, it goes to the left. So he turns to your right, I guess, as the roller, yeah. yeah. So he'll turn to the right, 45. Hello. And then uh, that guy's heat goes up by one, and that's it. Yeah. Oh. You better believe that puts him in the red. <laughs> and now we go to round two. So good luck. We roll d10s for priority. I got a 10. Oh, I got a four. So I will I'll go ahead and take that priority. I got to remember, this guy gets plus one strength against compromised titans now. <laughs> so I will do the first order here. We're going to go first fire on this guy. Please don't screw me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go first fire. Boop. I'm gonna do it now before I forget later. It might be more impactful next turn, but if I, it might be good now. I have one more secret stratagem is Bloodthirsty. My Titans get plus two to hit for this whole round if they're attacking from within two inches. Oh, no. and, and they get plus two to any charge Jeez. rolls. Uh, command checks on any charge rolls, the uh, commands, the uh, orders they make there. That's all I got. Uh, okay, so my next order is going to be... Oh, I still haven't done. Oh, you haven't done yours? Yeah. My bad, I thought you did. <laughs> So I think the only thing I'm going to do is a charge for that the, knight. The Strix here, where he's got the Siege Claw, so let's roll up a charge, he's a Scion. Oh, he's shaken. You have to do, have to do a shaken check. No, I did the three, I did the three, and oh. he didn't lose anyone else. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, it was three. Four. Oh, if he's shaken, yeah. then you have to check. That's right, you're good to go. Yeah, 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 he was not shaken. He's A-OK. -okay. Right, so. He's unflappable. Leroy. Jenkins. Six is good to go. Yep. So he'll have a charge order on him. Nice. Declare a charge on this Reaver. It's on a two up because he is bloodthirsty and he's a veteran. Charge! And uh, Tim wants to pop redundant systems on this forehand. What does this do? So the next critical hit he takes, he still takes the structure damage, but moving on the critical track is, the first one is ignored. 
Oh, okay, cool. Nice. So he saves that. That's pretty good. I think we want to try, because he's not going to be firing this turn. I, th I either do full stride or emergency repairs on that uh, Warhound there. Yeah. Either way, I'm only ordering Warhounds now, and the rest of them don't really that important. So we're going to go with uh, emergency repairs on a one. That's a fail. Yeah. On to movement. We're going to start with our charging Reaver, or else we lose that opportunity. we got to try and take this Warhound out. Uh, we're not too close right here, so we're going to have to boost his move, which we... Takes a little bit of heat. He's one away from orange now, but he's gonna move nine. And he's gonna absolutely t uh, tell a joke to that warhound. He's gonna ask that warhound what the five fingers said to the face, but to the legs instead. So we move the full nine. We're within range of our uh, chain fist, but I could, I guess I could use smash attacks yeah, instead. Yeah, just kick him, kick him in the shins. But to be fair to everyone watching, I haven't actually used the chain fist before, so I think I'm gonna take this opportunity Ooh. to do it. So it's three dice normally, but we move nine inches, so it's six attacks with a chain fist, and we're gonna call legs, because it's got the melee trait, so there's no negative to hit. But we also call bloodthirsty, so we get plus two to hit when we're within two inches. So this bad boy, with his weapon skill, is hitting on twos. Yep. So these are the hits on twos. Okay, we have six hits on legs. Uh, and then these are strength eight. What's the minimum Warhound leg? 10? So twos do directs. But sixes, so those are nothing. But these sixes add D3, so that six is gonna become a, a nine. Uh, and then this one's gonna become an extra D3, so that's an extra two. So those are the total strengths there. So these are strength 10 against legs, so resolving them first, they're just two directs. Okay. That heavily compromises it. So even yeah, like this- One, and then the second direct, I can't move that up one, so that goes up instead. So it's on the third critical track, it's and then the, third critical then track. the next one's a critical, he's dead. And critical and critical, so. We just, boom, we, we take him out down. The downside, however, he's in the red. Oh. Okay, so now we roll a, we're rolling a D10 and adding three to it, I believe. Three. Yeah, because yeah. he's in the red. <laughs> roll low. An 11, so yep. 10 is the highest. Cut. Cut his legs out from under him, he collapses, but his reactor was so juiced up that it just goes critical meltdown as it hits the ground. So it's gonna explode D3 inches plus five. So seven inches. So seven inches, that should hit your Warlord as well. Oh, it does. Yeah, so it's gonna hit the Warlord and my Reaver. They already <laughs> by bypass Void Shields uh, because I, I guess it's like it's a big fiery explosion. It just goes right into the Void Shields. Nuclear then two. each Titan is gonna take D6 uh, strength seven hits to a random location. So go ahead and do mine first and I'll roll for yours afterwards. Okay, so D6 hits. Uh, six to what part of the body? What, not the, the body. body. So to the body, it's a minimum 10. So look for threes. So that's nothing, so three directs. That was five direct hits to the body. It's moderately compromised. It's one away from the red. And then can I get so lucky on the Warlord? Five, that's not bad. And strength seven against the legs. It's strength 13, so that's a 12. That won't do anything. So we have one direct hit on the war Warlord's legs. And then we have a destroyed Titan. And that's difficult ground now. And that there, folks, is our first engine kill of the game. We're playing Mortis, so we get the Reaper's tally. Uh, whenever he goes to shoot with his uh, melted cannon or the laser destructor, I can reroll hit roll one. Uh, that's a like a permanent passive thing he has now. From that catastrophe, we have this little guy doing a charge as well. Yeah, ten inches. So, so he'll move, uh, getting three extra attacks as he goes right into the Warhounds, and then we're gonna resolve those attacks right now. So yeah, uh, Siege Claw called shots into the body. Now these are two attacks normally, but plus three, so fives, and they're hitting on twos because he's got plus one to hit. Yep. He mad, his homies are dead. Uh, okay, so they all hit, and then uh, we have to see, and they're in the body, so we have to see if it hurts. It's strength six, but it's rending. So we need six to really get that damage up high, but my body's a little, okay, how about you roll three ones and a two? Now, this is strength 10 on the body. My, my body is compromised, so this one actually might do something as well, because this is technically a 10. The Hecaton Siege Claw goes in and starts chunking out the body of that Warhound a little bit, and more importantly, keeps me kind of locked up there. Just double checking the rules. That, more importantly, blocks the Warhounds on this side of the table for now, leaving them back here for a turn uh, where they have to deal with <laughs> this dude. I guess this guy could split off and go his own way, though. Yeah. Aren't we just going to go ahead and fire a first fire with our uh, Volcano Cannon, and we're going to fire it into that Warhound using the line of sight from that Warhound. Heat! Free! I'm going to aim right for the middle, and it's going to scatter. But it deviates D6. Ooh, full six inches. That's a bad scatter. Boom, over there. Like a one, two, or th like a one or a two, it'll still hit it a little bit. So it still has that, like, it's five to hit directly. And then you still have, like, another one in three chance of hitting it a little bit. 
From the first fire, we go to Tim's Titan, this Warhound. He can't push his movement, so he only goes eight because he's already in the red. He is a moving bomb, which I don't love. Oh, look, he's right in line of sight of the Nemesis Warbringer now. Oh, boy. <laughs> We're going to back him up to there. So we get some negative modifiers on these weapons here. So this will be negative one, and these two are negative two. We're going to move this Warhound because he's so unfortunately blocked. He turns three times to face away, and then he moves a full eight. Already in the orange, I'd rather chill out on him. I'd rather him just like relax a turn and then take a hit to the body or well, he's or loses. He already has no voids, I guess. He does have one level of void, but it's going to collapse most likely. And now the war hound. Warlord. Warlord, yeah. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to boost his maneuvers. Oh, he's so going to turn a little more? Two turns. Power! <laughs> and ooh, maybe you won't do that. Maybe you'll do something else completely different. But he's got pretty good command. And you pass out of 10. Oh, yeah. So he gets a little bit of heat and then he'll be able to maneuver a wee bit more. We're also going to boost his speed. Yeah. Really put engine uh, power. Oh, hey, maybe <laughs> how many of those are going to roll? <laughs> we haven't really suffered it yet, but it's still kind of funny. Nine, he's good. Okay, so he can, he'll can. he have extra movement and extra maneuver. And then we're going we're gonna to move forward uh, in the front arc and then do uh, a 90 degree turn with two maneuvers facing that reaver. It's uh, what you kind of have. It's that or the reaver just gets up behind you and starts chain fisting you. <laughs> yeah. This warhound is going to go... He's not going to move yet. This one is going to move. Yeah, this one's going to move. Relatively safe to boost his. Oh, it's free. He was in the yellow. He would have gone to orange, but he's got no body damage and no void shield, so it wouldn't have mattered too much. So he's going to move up to 12. Yeah, fast. So he moves a straight line, turns a couple times, and moves a further three inches. Uh, he went nine. And then, uh, but he exposes his rear armor, which is not great. So it's plus two strength to all the shots against him. We're just going to hope uh, for plot armor. <laughs> With that, it looks like we dodged the Warlord's front arc as well. It's okay, the Warlord's just going to bear down weapons on that guy there. But that's his move, so we have to resolve your Reaver. Yeah. He's going to go fast, too. Nice. Fast. Uh, one hot. Moving nine. Yeah. I got to chase him down. I was curious, because the Warlord's servitors screwed up so much, he's actually in the orange right now. From the first turn, not healing. And then the combat on the the... Uh, the draining weapon and then boosting the maneuver and the speed this time and getting heat every single one of those we are in the orange for him so that might matter he might lose his voids which is interesting for a warlord and the last move i have is this little puppy here uh who would love to tango with that warhound there the, the hot bomb the hot bomb but suspicious uh correction this guy's in the orange we were looking at the shields instead could have pushed it but still not worth the risk so he's actually not in the red he's in the orange right now which will just resolve correctly when that comes up which is soon so we have to move this guy and uh i either move him with an eight to get hitting on threes with the plasma blast gun because he has no shields he could get shields but he has none right now and or i could just turn hide over here and shoot at this guy because i get plus two to hit when i'm within uh two inches and I'll ignore the void. Actually, I'll do that 100% because I'll get within his uh, I'll get within his void shields. Yeah. So we're going to end up there. We're going to get within two inches to ignore the voids. And uh, so two maneuvers and like four inches of movement. That's going to bring us to damage control. I'm going to start with mine that I have to do. This guy's in the orange right there. So we're going to roll a d6. And that is a body hit, I believe. That might be shield collapse too. Power failure. His voids collapse. Uh, collapse however they've already collapsed so it's a uh, d3 strength 9 hits to the body if you'd be so kind tim that's one uh does it hurt the body it is oh yes indeed yeah, that's 14 to the body that's a critical to the body that's the first damage he's taken to his body but now he's got a reactor leak because he pushes his engine just a little too hard and then the other warhound over here he uh, takes the same result, but he keeps his void shields. If you'd be so kind, sir. D3 strength 9 hits to the body. It'll be two of them. And we are looking for ones. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a direct, and that's a devastating. So his body is now lightly compromised, but nothing else too bad. Everything else is in the yellow for me. So which one would you like to do first? All right. Um, blue. I think I'll... S yeah, I think I'll it's just these two. Yeah, yeah, I'll start with this Warhound. So... That's a three. His shields. Oh, but his voids are down, so it's ah. D3 to the body. Oh, you get gifted two strength nine hits to the body. Uh, oh That's no, a no, oh, no. double critical, dude! So his, his track goes up two, but he ignores the critical damage to the body because he had the redundancy active. Okay, then the second critical goes up by one. So he's in the second track. But that can only move over one. So he then goes up to the third one. So he's got... The, the redundancy kept him alive. He almost wow. died to a reactor leak. Wow. <laughs> Not a reactor leak, but a... Uh, uh, damage to the body and technically it's a plasma leak the reactor leak is the effects of the critical damage on the body so he almost died to a plasma leak and the warlord's in the orange as well 
Uh, oh, bye bye voids. <laughs> He's got he no has, voids on He has full voids. <laughs> he just lost all his voids. Power failure. Jeez. And now we can do actual damage control. This is uh, suspicious. I'm going to start right to left because I don't think it matters too much for me. This Reaver is going to be rolling three server clades, and he needs to bring his shields up a little bit and vent a little bit of heat. So we can vent a little bit of heat, and that's all we got. We're, we're going from yellow to yellow here, baby. We're going to see if the Warlord, uh, the server just can do any better. They failed last turn, complete whiff. That's also pretty much a complete whiff. And you don't, you, you get to reroll ones because of the trait? It's just ones for the Legion trait. I see, okay. So you yeah. get to vent heat, I guess. <laughs> Not in the orange anymore. No Yay. shields, though. All right, then we're going to go on to, uh, I'm going to do this one running away, this Warhound over here. Roll a couple dice. I got a six. Run away. We're gonna go ahead and reignite void shields off that one. Uh, that's all I can do with him. Moving on to the Reaver. Uh, okay, so four dice because he... He's Try got the Servitor Clade, yeah. There we go. Oh, we got a six, five, a five, and a three. That's amazing. What does he even need? He's got full void, so he just vent all the heat. He's got three levels of heat to vent. So that's one, two, three, four. All right, oh, boom. He's good to go with that plasma reactor, A-okay. -okay. I'll go to this Warhound over here. He definitely needs something to fix. He's, no, ones and two don't matter on him. We'll go to your Warhound. Because ah. we know he's mad. He, this guy's messed up beyond belief. I think you can heal critical damage with five. with five. Yeah, gonna heal two criticals on his body. So he only has reactor leak one now. Everything else is good. His void shields can be reignited later. It's just because of where his heat's at right now, if he takes even one more, he could reduce your heat by two levels if he wanted to, but one little hit, you look at him the wrong way and he dies at the body. Also, he's pretty much at the uh, knife's edge, so running him hot could do some damage to me later on, which makes sense. But you want to get him to a better position first, and to do so, repairing the critical damage makes the most sense. Going down the line, this guy over here, yeah, vent some heat. After taking some body damage, he's in the yellow. I'll go ahead and do the rest of mine. So go to the Warhound up to the top right. We're gonna vent heat. He's actually got full void still. We just vented some heat. And then we have to vent some heat on the Warbringer. Four dice, and we vent two heat. That's all he's missing. I'm gonna figure out what the best Titan to attack with here is. And I think, because I wanna keep him alive and start working on this guy, firing the plasma blast guns and hopefully randomizing a weapon hit will save some face on him. So we're gonna fire this guy first. We're gonna put the shots underneath that footy right there. <laughs> And we're going to go ahead and declare maximal fire. So we'll fire the first one. That's four hits. Ow. Oof. That's, oh, actually, I get plus two to hit with these. That's, uh, that still hits, though. That's still good. Wow, those, these hit on twos with this. Glorious. Okay, so we have legs. So that's 14 and 16 to leg. The ones don't matter. We, we had a blade of armor on him from the beginning. So he just ignores the first one. So he takes a critical hit instead. It. <laughs> but he doesn't take the devastating hit. So it goes up by two and a little bit of damage there. Then we're going to pop the second shots on him as well. That's four more hits on him. And where I want weapon. I got head. Okay, I'll take that too. <laughs> 13, 16, 16 to the head. Oh, wow. His head armor is 17. So that's just three, that's two devastings and a direct to his head. Yeah, so he's at the his top fully, of the track. Fully compromised head. Okay, yep. plus three to that. Not bad. And then a smash attack, I guess. Then smash attacks are only an inch, but we're going to do called shots to the head because his head's all banged up. Uh, it'll be D3 attacks. Okay, three attacks. And we get plus two to hit because of Bloodthirsty. So these are all, because of all the modifiers, strength 10 hits to the head because it's fully compromised. It's got the melee trait, so I can do that for free. I get plus two to hit because of Bloodthirsty, uh, which means these hit on twos. Uh, so, oh, we do have a miss, and these are strength 10 to the head. Ooh, 15, 16. So two more devastating hits to the head. Not criticals, though. So that puts this critical track up by two on the head. That is MIU feedback and moderati wounded. We got a little bit more negatives on the hit rolls. That might help. So in a weird way, we, we, we compromise the damages because the moderati, I think, operate the weapons. And from that brutal maneuver, we're going to move on to the knight with his Hecaton Siege Claw, and he's going to uh, do more attacks to the body, I guess. I think that's, that's what he's... Body is moderately compromised, so these are going to be strength eight hits on the body here, hitting on twos. Oh, yeah. And uh, you need at least twos to show to do some damage. So that is going to be 11, 12. So the direct fully compromises the body. And then the next one was a devastating, which puts it on the first critical track. So we got a reactor leak now from that little knight. Um, yeah, so now we'll fire the Volkite Chevy Chase into his body. Call shots in the body using um, weapon skill three. So hitting on fives with the call shots. Yep. That's a, oh, we missed the body. Yep. I think the thing that makes the most sense next is I don't know if it makes the most sense, but this Reaver has full voids. I think I want to try and take him up with Warhounds. The, the Nemesis Warbringer can't see the Warhound because of all of this in the way, but we can draw a line, say, from this 
Uh, I can't see the Warlord because of all this way, but I can draw a line, say, from the Warhound to fire at him. Or I could fire at this guy to try and take him out, but either one is kind of the right call. But I would save my Reaver's butt if I do some damage to the weapons yeah. over there. It's tough because two of the weapons hit him on fives, one hits on fours, all the weapons hit him on fives. And they scatter D6 less. So I think I'm going to go for the Warlord to try and light him up a little bit. And mm -hmm. then the Reaver will have like a more ideal target. Because it's random with all the blast markers and everything. And plus I might hit him with the Quake and shift his arc a little bit more. Ooh, yeah. uh, but if I do that, that's a risk. Because then it will get him in arc. Mm -hmm. So that's a tough call. I don't think I can risk hitting the arc on this guy <clears throat> over here. So I think I'm just going to go for the shots on the Warhound over here and try and put him down and uh, kind of give this flank a little more security for myself. Uh, I would love to shoot at the Warhound to see what damage I can do. But the fact that it's, it's weird that the Quake effect or the Concussive effect, whichever one it is, is actually going to be a negative impact here. Because this guy's out of arc, it looks like, and I don't want him to... Uh, I don't want him to be uh, shot at. Start with the fun guns. Let's do the uh, the volcano cannons first. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do the first one onto him. We'll do the one hitting on four first. Ooh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe we do something completely different. A seven will be passed. We get a little bit of heat though. Right in the middle there. Bloop. Does it hit? You better believe that's two hits on him. These are strength ten. I should probably roll up the uh, body. I would love to see body. That is body. So we got 12 and 13, but he's fully compromised. So it's 15 and 16 to the body. So that is two critical hits on his body, unfortunately for him. And then because he was only two, he was a three away from dying. That puts four on the critical track and he goes down and he's in the orange. So we're going to add one to this D10 roll. A 10, big meltdown. Before we resolve that, that's engine kill for this guy. Boom. So that's uh, the Reaper's tally. So catastrophic, sorry, catastrophic meltdown over here, D3 plus five inches. So four. Oh, six. Oh, six, sorry. Hits the rock and there's nothing within six inches that way. So it's, oh, it's kind of lackluster. Uh, I would have I would have loved to see, I, I, as long as I'm taking it, I want you to take hits too. So I would love to take hits on him if he was getting hit. But he unfortunately just explodes and goes down there and leaves a, a marker and that's ripped that Warhound. We got a little bit of difficult terrain left over. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not going to bother shooting the other weapons because they'd be just draining on his weapon. So we got there. Oh, nice. Okay, that was obviously the right call, I guess. All right, well, we have a few options left. Uh, Tim's got the Warlord and the Reaver to fire. What's next? Oh, I'll fire my Warlord into your Reaver. Oh, boy, here we go. Nice. Yeah. That's not good for me. Don't want to risk, like, we, we, we double-checked the arc off camera, and, yeah, the, this Warhound is out of arc. So we didn't want to, he didn't want to risk shooting over here in case he wasn't in arc, and that's obviously clear shots. But we are within the scale of the war, uh, Warlord, so we can't fire the top guns at him. So we have the Volkite and the big uh, Gatling gun. Gatling blaster. We get plus one to hit. I got two levels of Void left on this Reaver. Oh, you have Voids. Got it, got it. Yeah. Do, you want to, do you want to use, I assume, the Volkite's got higher strength? Uh, mm, oh, okay, you have voids, yeah. so... And we're gonna put draining on it to make it beam. Go right back into the orange, why don't we? Oh, go deep into the orange, why don't we? He's one away from red. Whew, who cares, this warlord just... He he tests the limit of his uh, reactor. But that means how many hits at three? Five. Four. Five, five, five void saves. Yeah. Ooh. We're gonna push his reactor. Okay, we're still in the yellow. we has got pretty good reactors. And then five saves on fours. We have void still. We have no damage from that. I'm so sorry, dude. That's so <laughs> rough. Oh no. Right. And then the macro. Macro cat. And macro these are twos. Thingy. Couple misses, and that's four saves on my voids. I will not push the reactor. And uh, we still have voids. <laughs> we have one level of void left. <laughs> this, this reaver, dude. Oh man. But it looks like Legio Mortis keeps their godly roll plot armor. Uh, agenda going here uh the only thing i really have left to fire is this reaver over here that matters the top gun which is totally magnetized no it's not okay is gonna fire because it's got the 360 arc the melted cannons out of arc it was magnetized i was too afraid too afraid to do it with one hand so he's gonna fire a couple shots over there i was gonna do a couple shots on threes not gonna bother calling them or anything we got a hit and a strength eight it's gonna go uh it gets reroll ones with the reaper's tally so it doesn't matter there uh 11 to the leg can't hurt it i feel like the reaper's tally rule is a little vague i wouldn't mind uh someone clarifying it for me in the comments because i highly doubt it's going to come up it says you could re-roll a die roll of a one when you make an attack with a weapon without the melee trait does that mean our armor rolls separate from the attack or are they part of the attack so if i roll a one for like superficial damage can i re-roll that uh it's quite and it's quite clear on the hit roll you'd re-roll a one that one seems obvious but it says every time you make an attack with a weapon do i get to re-roll a hit roll or a damage roll for each weapon or once for the entire attack sequence i'm not too sure i have to look into it deeper only if it comes up i will only look at it if it comes up and i hope it doesn't come up this game it goes to your reaver uh, so like normal 
uh, Volkite, beam, because then I ignore our negatives. That's right. Boom, boom, boom. For free. And no heat. Boom. So no draining on that. And that means five saves on my voids. Yeah. Uh, well, hmm, that's tough. If I roll all of these, I'll have to eat up one of the other weapons. But then they're negative one to hit right now. And he's in the yellow. So I don't want to push it. So we're just going to roll it. Boom. <gasps> okay, it wouldn't matter. My voids would have collapsed anyways. Okay, this voids collapse from the Volkite on the top. And then we have to survive a melt a cannon and a, a volcano gun. Melt a cannon first, right in the middle, I assume? Yeah. So we're hitting on a four because of the Moderati. <gasps> the Moderati! Scatters D10 inches. So it'll scatter seven inches. Yeah, so it'll go about... You know, this further crater this crater. <laughs> and then we have the volcano, which is draining. So it's draining and it hits. Yeah. Boom. Just got that one off camera a little bit there. So oh, it's, sorry. That's okay. The camera's uh, 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 acting oddly. So two hits on me. Yep. Uh, where's it going to go? You would love to hit his legs right now. That is where you want to go. You hit body. That's still good. 13 and 15 to body. Actually, scratch that. It is 15 uh, and... Uh, 17 to body because you're my rear armor. Because of the rear armor, I had to expose it to get the crew out of here. We are looking at a two criticals to the body. So that puts it up four tracks and two critical tracks as well. So he's not looking so good. He's got the void shield generator burnout and a reactor leak. But he is still alive. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to attack with him. He's going to shoot his uh, turbo laser destructors in the air, uh, taunting the Reaver over here. And then <laughs> I have this guy to attack with. So we're going to do the Vulcan Mega Bolters and the smash attack into the Knight here. But we get plus two to hit because we're bloodthirsty this turn. The Vulcan Mega Bolters hit on two still. Uh, I don't know if I can use rapid if I'm in melee. So that's seven hits on the first one, plus a further... Uh, five, so it's 12 hits from those. Five, five up saves from the 12 hits, because it's rank four. Oh, well, you saved quite a bit of them. About half, actually. Nice. Oh, wow. And then that's going to be five that go through. So I need fives for direct hits here. So we have one direct hit. Then we have the smash attacks, D3 of them. So it's one. Uh, that does a... Get a six up save. Oh, you make it. Nice. Oh, you go tangoing with this Warhound for a while. Cool, cool night there. Nice. <laughs> nope. All right, that's it for combat. We've resolved combat fully. Uh, we have to go look at some critical damage on everything. So we got the reactor leak. He, his reactor trait goes from green to yellow. Plasma Blast Guns here has a reactor leak, so he goes from orange to orange. And then this Warhound has a reactor leak from yellow to orange. This guy's stabilizers are damaged, so one to three, he goes left. So he goes 45 to the left. So he'll be facing, oh, I guess it would be your left. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, well, then uh, we are going to end it there. There's no scoring yet because this guy has to end a round near my table edge. So we have a priority roll for the third round here, which is a guaranteed round. I get a two to a five, so I do not get priority this turn. Yo. The goal for me is to keep this Titan alive in the end phase over here. Uh, it's going to be tough. Hopefully emergency repairs might get him there, but I failed the last time. My bloodthirsty is up. I don't get plus two to hit. Uh, any more this round. I did quite a bit of damage with it though, so that was nice. It mostly mattered there, I suppose. I call for an emergency repairs on the Warlord. Yep. Uh -oh. And he's gonna roll six, then he'll get it. So we're gonna immediately roll some emergency repairs for him. And after we, and there would be plus one to all the rolls. And we're in the third round, so we don't get the uh, trait anymore. Uh, so plus one, so that's a. That two does nothing, so roll the. That's a four, five, and a six. Because of the Legio trait, the six can vent two heat, and the other two are good enough to vent heat. So we're gonna vent four heat on him, bring him right back to green. You have no shields active, but his reactors at least calm down. Though the downside to emergency repair is he can either move or shoot in his next turn. He can't do both. Or in the upcoming phases, I should say. Uh, my stuff, what do I wanna do? I wanna try probably first fire on this guy again. Might as well, it's the safest one. That's an eight, so he'll just keep first fire active. We're gonna move on to the Reaver, who's gonna attempt to first fire. Now his, his MI, there's MIU feedback, so it's negative one, and he's near the uh, the trophies of war, the remains of the foe or whatever. So it's the negative two, but he's the Princeps Senioris, so it's plus two in the end. Net zero, which is whatever his base uh, command check is. Looking for a four plus. You got it, didn't need all the negatives. You're all good to go. Now that Reaver over there probably doesn't want to do anything. These Warhounds over here could use some assistance. Attempt an emergency repair on this guy. An eight, we get it. So we're gonna go ahead and roll a couple of dices for him to see if we can't fix his stuff. So the three is nothing, but that's a five. Yeah, whatever, we'll give him a level of shields back. I think this guy's best bet's emergency repairs. He passes, he's really bad. His like, body's critically damaged and he's venting plasma and all that stuff. So okay, we get a good roll. We get a four and a six. I could bring his voice back online, but they won't matter. I'd rather 
just vent two levels of heat so I don't take the body damage in the damage control phase. So I'm in the yellow and then I can try and fix a critical damage on his body in that phase, hopefully if I roll a five up. And this guy over here needs all the help he can get to get out of this weird situation, so he's gonna attempt a first fire. He does, and he'll have first fire. Oh, gosh, I almost screwed up. I almost forgot his uh, emergency repair order. It's, you know what, I passed every other one. <sighs> Feels bad, feels so bad. That's okay, <laughs> he'll be fine, he'll be fine. Hypothetically, what would I roll? Oh, nothing. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't feel bad anymore. All right. That's, uh, that's it. We're on to actual movement. Because I didn't, I didn't want to do anything with him. I don't really know what I... just need him to move. I think that should be in close range. We're going to resolve the melt again. And the melt again, it will be within 12. That looks good. Well, it's tight. It's quite 12, but it's a good 12, yeah. So we got the melt again and firing over here. He will be hitting on fours, though, because the first fire. Or because of the, uh, the damage to his head. Yeah. The... Good luck, Warhound! Come <laughs> on! Oh, it doesn't matter with the damage or not, so it scatters D10. Uh, We're gonna go right on the middle there. And six over here. So close. I guess this guy makes the most sense to move here because the rest don't really matter too much. I could do a first fire with a nemesis, but it, won't, it shouldn't matter at all. So we're gonna move him. He's already pretty scuffed, so we're gonna boost his movement. He's in the, oh geez, I rolled a two. Oh, so That's really bad. Dinky. He goes to the red with that. He was in the first orange track, so he's in the red now. Oh, there we go. Boom. And then uh, he's gonna move uh, 12. His regular move wouldn't have got him there, so I had to move him there. And now I just need him to survive to the end of the game. I might as well. End of the turn. End of the, end of the turn, end of the turn. I'm gonna do, he's got three maneuvers. So two is a full 90, and then we'll go like that. Just so we could face the front to uh, most of his attackers. Real, yeah, realistically, uh, Tim brought up, I have to survive the damage control phase coming up because he's real bad right now. It's, a lot of that's body damage because that's where the reactor is, and he's like, uh, he's on the first track of it, so... Actually, he's on the second track of it. He's pretty done. I was hoping the emergency repairs would keep him going, but, uh, nope. <laughs> it doesn't look like there's anything to move on Tim's side here because if he moves, he can't shoot. He has first fire, he can't move. This guy's already in melee range, so... We're going to go on the rest of my moves. Uh, we're going to keep you where you are. We're just going to resolve a... Well, I guess we'll just move you. I uh, will do the first fire, move you first fire, then keep you where you are. So six Vulcan Mega Bolters hitting on threes because it's uh, melee. So we have four hits. And then these are... Oh, you have to do your four saves. Five up saves. Whoa. You make one. And fives to hurt you. So we do a six for a direct hit, I believe. And that's very, uh, that's another direct hit. He's one away from the red pips. So we have to do two more directs to him or uh, devastating. And proceed to moving this guy. He'll hang out there. He won't be able to fire this combat phase because he's under emergency repairs. And the last thing to resolve is this first fire. The only real logical target is to fire at the warlord who has no voids active right now. We're gonna put a volcano cannon into him. We'll go right in the middle. We don't have line of sight to him, but we do from this warlord, warhound. So we'll hit on a five. We hit twice, you better believe. I have to do draining first, so I might get Awakened Machine Spirit. No, it's free. Of course. <laughs> so two strength tens, uh, right to the leg. So we have a 14 and a 15 to the leg. Actually, it's um, it's a 15, 16 to the leg, because we're in the side. Ooh, just shy of a critical, so two and devastating. Wait, 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 the second one was. So we have two devastating hits and we have, is it plus two yet? It's a plus two now. Oh, it's moderately compromised. Yep. Something to keep in mind for my chain fist later. That will mean the movement phase is done. So you get to start with damage control. Is anything in the orange on the table? Uh, no. Yeah, because the emergency repairs kept him good. So you're good. Yep. You can go ahead and roll up uh, your heals. We'll start um, with the warlord, I guess. The knight Strix. The Strix. Heal. On a six, he can heal a structure point. Because uh, he's Mechanicum Knight. No, that's a five. Rhino repair, baby. Man. We'll go to mine. We'll start with the Reaver. Uh, I got a four. You know what that is. That's venting heat. He's a yellow to yellow. He's <laughs> one away from green, I guess. Two from orange. Let's see if we can get those shields back online for that warlord. Lord. Oh, yep. boy. Yeah. That's a good roll. <laughs> so he's only missing heat and shield. So you can reignite the void to so put two levels into it if you wanted to. Right, and and then, then two levels of it. Yeah. So he's still at a four up, but he's no, got a three. Sorry, that does bring it to a three up. I was looking at it backwards. And then we're going to go and try and repair this guy a little bit more. No bonuses, though. Ah, oh, no. I miss, I miss the storm so much. Oh, well. Yeah. All right, the Reaver. Four dice and a reroll. Okay. Uh, I guess we rolled a two. We got a five and a five. Yay. Because his plasma reactor and voids are fine. The only thing to really do is heal the head twice, which is huge because we had pretty big damage on the head. Yeah. Oh, I forgot he had some critical damage on his legs. So we're going to fix the one critical damage on the legs and take away the... Is it MIU feedback that goes away? I take away the moderati wounded. Also, you get to hit normally. So MIU feedback's still active though. Okay. So one critical damage on the head, nothing on the legs on him anymore. Uh, we're going to go with this Warhound over here who is going to repair. And he rolls a four. So that's venting some heat. 
Yeah, he's doing all right now. He's in the green for plasma. And that's it for your repair. So let's go with the Warhound over there. Five and a three. Oh, you had a reactor leak, I'll fix it. I said he still has a little bit of plasma to vent, but I guess that was kind of part of the plan. Last thing to do is he's got one level of he's got a vent, he's good to go. I rolled five dice, I don't know why. Here's four. There we go, <laughs> even better. <laughs> Gosh, I almost skipped it on this guy. So he's in the red. I have to roll on the table. Because he's in the red. Roll big. That's a seven. To the edge of the board. And just, just melt down. He could have melted down there on a on something bad like a ten. Okay, yeah. so go ahead and roll me up D3. This will probably kill him. Unless I get lucky. One! Uh -huh. That could still kill him. That could still kill him. So strength nine to the body. So the body's at plus two right now. A critical hit would kill him. Yes. So, so you just need... Uh, so it's a strength 11 hit. So roll me a one. Six. Roll me a one. Six. A six! Critical! Yes. If anyone's curious, a three up would have killed him there. So I needed you to roll a one or a two to keep him around. Because, uh, yeah, that would have... Oh, dang. Close. He goes down. So he's in the red. I don't think anything too dramatic can happen here. That's the that's another reactor meltdown, uh, which is funny because the crew just pop out over here, which is good for me. I still have my crew active in the game near the board edge, which gave me some points. But we tried to get this guy over there, and he took a big hit. To scatter the marker D10 inches off the middle, because before the reactor melts down, the crew get out, and they run 7 inches, not directly sideways, but at a slight angle. From the middle, seven inches to there, and then this guy goes catastrophic. Uh, he does a big explosion. Can't hurt the crew, luckily, but he that is an uh, engine kill over there. Uh, engine kill on himself. So that's a Reaper's tally for him. And, and you kill question mark? <laughs> question mark? <laughs> this whole area is scuffed. Anything. And then we go to combat. <laughs> You'll kill something, surely. <laughs> well, now you know you don't have to worry about him. Now you can worry about engage and destroy. This is yeah. still worth 12 victory points to me, though, that I got it so close to my edge. Now that the main target's down, Reaver into my Warhound. I get no voids against this, but I can't get hit by the top gun. Nope. Fire the melt gun first, we're within two, so we have to use his weapon skill. Uh, four plus. Yeah, four to hit. Two. That's hey. five, we got two hits. More definitely in fusion range. We just oh, have yeah. to see where it's gonna go. And we are gonna have, oh. Body. Oh geez, that kills him for sure, dude. That's like <laughs> oh two, that's gosh. two critical. That's eight, that's like 18. Uh, 21. Uh, 21 to the body, yeah. Damn, that kills him because I didn't get the five up to repair the critical damage. The plan was to vent the heat in the first phase and get a five up and hopefully the body doesn't get hit. That's engine kill. Rolling on the D10 and we get a seven. Mm. That is wildfire. So he's going to scatter directly away. And then we're going to fire his weapons. He's going to turn directly away because the scatter die poison that way. And th this guy is an arc for his wildfire. So we're going to put a pump, pump a couple shots into him there. We're within eight so we don't get the negatives to hit. So the first one is a miss, we'll scatter, oh, there's two of them, I forgot plasma. And then the second one, a couple shots. Ooh, four hits on him with the wildfire, very bad. And that got scattered the other two as well. So the first one scatters one inch away, that's gonna be another hit on him, so that's the third hit. And the other one is five inches off, so it's gonna be somewhere around there. I gotta do the first one, uh, technically, the one that double scattered against his void. He voids it, and then we have four saves against his void. That's the proper way to do it there. And then we, I think our voids collapse. It spins in this direction, wildfire some plasma. I make the first void shield save, then the second one just completely nullifies them. They collapse and then he, then he falls in a random direction. I want him to fall backwards. <laughs> he'll, fall, he'll fall that way. Shoots at him and then he falls eight inches in that direction. He measure from the edge of the base six inches and anything within two gets hit. So anything within eight inches of the edge of the base gets hit. So he falls and some of the debris, because like him falling pushes the earth, the earth like hits him as well. D6, strength six hits on him. Let's see what we, how many hits we have. So it's three of them. We have to see where it hits those three spots as strength six. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, so body, so a 10 on the body. Now he's moderately compromised on the body there. So that was a horrible series of events. Right, so we leave a little crater there. And uh, that was a good shot, not bad. Okay, we lost two of our, we lost half our Warhounds there. And we almost took out a Hobie. That's not ideal. So I will shoot now. So we fired with him. This is, did I not move him? Huh? I never did. I'm right, just correcting a mistake here. Forgot to move him. Uh, I want to get off that terrain. So that's his maximum move while on the terrain. So I have to boost his movement. So it's free. We're still, we're still not within two though, unfortunately. So you will get your full void. Weirdly enough, this guy over here has to go before he dies to this little knight. So we're gonna fire, <laughs> we're gonna fire everything with a knight there. The Vulcan Mega Bolt is gonna hit on threes because we're using a weapon skill. So that's gonna be six hits on the first one. And then the second one is going to be uh, five hits. So it's 11 hits. 11 five ups. You save three of them. So there's eight hits on you. 
I need to do some damage here. So I need fives to do directs. Okay, he dies. Okay, we got him. We finally free ourselves up from that little knight. Get the warlord into the reaver. Uh, we are... Yes we, or no? Yeah, we got voids. We got one level of void. <laughs> okay, destructor beam. Are you going to beam it? Yeah, I'll, I'll beam it. We're going to go draining, baby. He, gonna... vented, he finally vented all his plasma. Let's get hotter. Hot. No, free. Ooh. Free is nice. That's five void saves, and that you better believe those void shields collapse. Call shots on body from the gap macro. Yep. So it's negative two for the cold shot, plus one for short range, hitting on fours. Fours are good. Fours are good. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, we have a couple hits. Two. Yeah. And the call shots on the body, so do they hurt? Oh, you better believe they do. Two devastating hits, but he's compromised on the body. So the first one pushes into critical, and so does the second one. So we got reactor leak and void seal generator barn out. He'll just fire right back at you. All he could do is his uh, melt the cannon, though. No, he can still do that because he's a bigger scale. Oh, is that how it works? Yep. Hey, I'll do draining on it. Never know. Oh, maybe not. Maybe we'll do something completely different. He is a veteran, so we pass. Couple shots on threes. Ooh, a couple hits. So you have four up void saves because you got to the three plus. I assume you don't want to push it, or do you? Ooh. Fours. Ah. You know what? I'll let you roll it first, then decide. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> the, math, the math doesn't check out, so I'll, right. I'll just not push. Roll them up, and we got... Oh, it doesn't matter. Well. Okay, so we lose two levels of voids. You still have some. Boop, boop. Uh, one level active, yep. to be exact. And we'll fire the melt on. Uh, right in the middle of your feedies. That's a miss. Scatter D10. And we're going to get a three inches backwards, please. But it scatters something like this. Very close. We have one save on the void for the Warhound, Warlord. And it was a five. Camera acted up a little bit there, but it's a save all the same. I'm shooting, so. And we're done. So we have the Nemesis Warbringer left. So we're going to fire the Nemesis Warbringer at the Warlord. We can't see him with the Warbringer, but we brought our lobbing volcano cannons. So we draw a line of sight from the Warhound, and it scatters D6 instead of D10, but it hits on fives. We're sort of the Quake Cannon. One shot, and it deviates. We'll go directly in the middle. Scatters D6. So inches, that's off. That's a, ba that's a bad scatter. Boom. All right, then we're going to do the first volcano cannon. Gets a little hot. Hits on a five. It hits twice, so two void shield saves. Four ups. Ooh, they collapse. And then we have another volcano cannon. A little bit of heat. And does it hit? Nope. Scatter D6. Four inches off. That's also a miss. Yeah, three, three or less would be hits depending on the scatter, but four is a good scatter with that. Okay, well, we got his shields down again. Not bad. Uh, other than that, though, I think we're done because this guy moved. That should be the end of the third round, realistically. So we have to resolve some uh, end phase critical damage, if we have any. This Reaver has a reactor leak, which puts him into the orange. Do you have anywhere? Uh, no, I just have MIU feedback, which is a negative on commands for the Reaver. Not bad. All right, we can clean up some of these dice and go into the fourth and potentially final round of this game. It's priority time. I got a treat. Ooh, Six. you get first priority. Or you get to give it to me. You do have two Titans left. So that's a tough one. So do you want priority or do you want me to have it? Um, yeah, I'll take priority and... Kind of straight to the strategy, strategy phase. Yeah, I got nothing either. First fire on the Warlord. All right, order it up. What do the dice say? The dice say? Ooh. That's an eight. Yes. You got first fire. I'll do the same with this guy. First fire. We got a seven, so he'll be first firing. So it's hard to see the D10s here, but I'm trying to call it as best I can. Reaver is feeling good, so we're going to keep it off of that for him. And then we are going to go on to our veteran over there who's going to try a charge. We got it with a seven. So we're going to try and be aggro with him. And then we're going to go ahead and, because uh, we have no more orders to do. We've already done first fire. Yep. So I think I'm going to... Well, we just finished the strategy phase, so now it's into movement. Well, these guys might do orders too. Oh, right. I don't okay, okay. think they will, though. I think they're just going to both chill. Yeah, they're both going to hang out. Movement priority does go to you. You have first fire active. You want to go with the macro? Well, Gatlin. I'll go the macro. Call um, shots on the body. Wait, the body is a. We're going to do call shots with the uh, beam weapon. We're going to put draining on the beam to make it automatic hits here. You can only do that against the nearest Titan, which is the fine, but it's also only, only a strength six weapon. That's why it's so low, but my body's so hurt. So the draining says. Yes, one. one level of heat, and we're good to go. So it's three hits on my body that are strength nine because it's so compromised. So let's see what you get. Sixes. So strength nine, 10, 11, 12, and then 12, and then, okay. So 11, 12, 13. That definitely kills him. Can't do much about that. So I'm going to roll a d10 and add one to it because I'm in the orange. So we've got a three. So he's laid low. He's going to go fall right into you. Boom, collision. D6 hits. 
It'd be two hits at strength eight, because I'm scale eight, to the leg. Oh no. His legs are moderately damaged, so plus two, these are strength 10. So that's a 13 and a 15 to his legs. That gets me a critical because I can't move it. That's a yeah, direct hit, then a devastating. The, the direct puts it to the end, and the devastating pushes it over. So he's got a little bit of critical damage on his legs. The damage back from the Warlord shouldn't matter. And then I fall in a random direction. And I'm going to fall this way. <laughs> I think Right, the direct hit, he just got his legs buckle underneath him, and he falls over where he is. Then it pushes up the earth and everything around it. Then some of them falls on the Warlord there. So it's another D6 strength eight hits. So it'll be six this time. And if we get to the leg, which we do, I think you might die too. Oh. <laughs> so that's, uh, cause you're, these are strength 11 cause of how compromised your legs yeah, are. Plus three. So that's 14, 14, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, that'll, that, that. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, oh no, dude, I'm sorry. Okay, you roll, how, how bad's his reactor uh, green? His reactor's in the yellow, so he's- Just he's, a D10, eh? okay, yeah. All right, what's he gonna do? D10 and he's gonna have a two. He's laid low, as, uh, same thing. <gasps> let's no. see you walk this way. Oh, let's see it. So you scatter D6 in a random direction and fall. Let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> let's just, one. Oh, one inch Yeah, so up, like that direction. It's kind of like, Pushes me a little bit, then you yeah. fall over. And then I fall over too. In a random direction. Roll that oh, bad boy man. again. Fall this way. <laughs> no, you just oh, fall down where you are. So we, 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 we fall in the lover's embrace and fall over dead. What's going on? Oh, that was very sad. That was very. So now it's two warhounds and a nemesis versus a, a warlord. Reaver. Reaver. Oh, Reaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If anyone was curious, that was still in the movement phase. That was the, that was the first fire Volkite beam shot that ended the Warlord's life. Because he like he shot the body, he started falling forward and went right into the Warlord's legs and the Warlord fell over top of him and, and the boot. Oh, horrible. All of this for a Warlord crew. The, re the retrieval mission always gets me. All this like cataclysmic damage just for these guys. Yeah, now we need another head of cost of Warlord on the other Legio side. Like, what is going on here? Uh, okay, so that was that was your first move. First fire killed my guy, boom. <laughs> yes. Now I get to move. Yes. Huh. Well, I want to see where he's going to go. So we're going to do first fire from this guy and fire a Quake Cannon at him. We're using his line of sight. Funny enough, he actually doesn't have line of sight to the Reaver, but the Nemesis can see over the rocks and see his upper torso, so we hit on a five. No, we, we scatter, but we can't be scatter the full D10, funny enough, because uh, we're right, uh, we're using our line of sight. Uh, two, <gasps> that'll still hit. Yeah, that should One void shield save, please. And no. it should, you should be a three up still. Yeah, I need gonna push. push. Sure. All right, cost you a heat, three up rolling ones. Ha, hey. thanks for the heat. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna boost his movement so he can walk over that crater. Two. Ow. <gasps> He's getting there. Where's he at? Yellow? One away from orange? End of the yellow, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. All right, and then he moves quite far. So the first, so difficult terrain, moves forward with the boosted movement and then maneuvers, and then I got my moves. I'm gonna go ahead and do, uh, I'm gonna see what this Vulcan Megabolter has going for him. So he's just gonna go the full eight here. He's not gonna boost his movement because he's just, I, I, his body's so hurt. <laughs> That it's just not worth this. We're gonna maneuver a couple times his collar a day there. So we're gonna go with this Warhound. We're just gonna go and do something rather aggressive. We'll move within an inch of him and we'll maneuver again. And uh, we'll call her a day there. <laughs> and then you get to shoot first. Parts of me wonder if it was smarter just to go up and around, but I like this weird aggressive move here. So we start with the melt gun, the fusion gun, uh, using your weapon skill. I assume you want to aim further back or you want to go right in the middle? Uh, maybe further back. So four up. Oh, two hits. And I strength 11. I have nothing, uh, no void shields against it. He's got no voids in the yeah, combat yeah. Legs. Oof, two good hits to the leg. That was a devastating and critical hit to the leg, so they're moderately compromised, and the uh, first track is filled there. And then we have the uh, heat from the volcano cannon to fire. And it's going to be no heat, very good, super free. And then does it oop, Does it hit on a four? It hits, oh, it deviates. And it goes... Eight inches. Oh, way back. Sideways? <laughs> Weirdly enough, it shoots over there, I guess. Yes, yeah, somehow it just fires that. It just <laughs> fires behind him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad scatter. This Warhound's next. He's going to fire into the Reaver. They're both negative two to hit, though, because he's, uh, it looks like he's mostly covered, so it looks like it's enough that he'll get it. And then uh, we'll do, I guess, I guess it could matter. I could get lucky and spike his uh, voids here. So we have four hits on the voids on the first one. Yeah. You feeling the boost or no? Yeah. Yeah, he's still on three <laughs> up, so. He's going he's gonna to go to the orange if you roll it. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, he's, he's, in, he's, he's in the red. red now, baby. That's the thing with the... Oh, hell. All right. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, three ups for rolling ones. Go up with the bang. We roll the one. And he's good. All right, we'll fire the other one. All right, sixes or fives. Uh, we have three hits on the uh, void. Three? Yeah, three, three ups. Can't boost it now, I guess. Uh, you're good. No need to boost it. Oh, we got that resolved. Yep. Oh, boy. Let's, uh, let's go with our Warbringer firing at him now. Uh, we're going to draw a line of sight with our, <laughs> with our Warhand. Uh, we're going to aim the blast at the back foot there. Starting with a Quake on a five. Nope, that's a, that's a scatter. Scatter's D6. Uh, two inches. Yeah. So just hit him once, yeah. And we pass the safe. And then we're going to do the first Volcano Cannon. Uh, they're not going to strip the shield, so I'll do the first one, cost me two, and the second one cost me three. It now dawns upon me that we, we the movement phase with the, the first fire and the few movements completely skip the damage control phase. Got got two into the combat there. So I'm just going to quickly resolve... Oh, jeez, there's no way to really quickly resolve these. I guess we'll just quickly do the damage control phase. There's only a few titans. I'm just trying to remember what that would have mattered here. Because his voids wouldn't have mattered. It's just his heat, so I'll just do his. He just vents a... He brings his voids back online, I guess. The only thing he could do is bring his voids online. I could repair the leg damage, but he wouldn't have taken that yet. So he brings his voids back online. That guy over there, uh, five and a six, and that's that guy up there. All he could do is vent heat. And I know for my nemesis Warbringer, all I could do is vent heat as well. And I was at max heat, so I'd vent three heat. Because I was one heat down. And then I'm in the yellow heat now. That's it, exactly. Okay, so because I had one heat from the, the first fire, I would have vented it, and now I'm back in the yellow with that. That's all I could fix here. And then yours has four, because it's got the better servitors. Uh, and you have a five. And that could have been... Uh, I still I get a reroll for his... Uh, oh, the upgrade, you might as well. You'd be crazy not to. Warlord trait. Okay, so... <laughs> if, you, you, had, you had heat you could have vented one level, and you had... Yeah. And then I rolled two heat. For a so that fixes that. That means you're, all, all that matters is this guy is in the orange and not the red. And he could still push his reactors if he wants to against these uh, saves here. The other option is he can take the last critical damage on the head and stay in the red for his reactor, which is what Tim wants to do. So yep. easy enough fix. Doesn't change anything at all. I've got the heat on my volcano cannons. So I've got to resolve the first one on a five. So that's going to scatter D6 inches off that leg there. And that's going to scatter two inches that way. It'll actually still hit him twice. And the voids. And you're good. And the second one on a five. Two hits on him. Two more saves. You're good. All right, no damage there. Very good. And then I resolve my uh, plasma blast guns. And then, then the combat phase is done. He's in the green phase, so we'll do maximal fire. First two shots on fours. We're going to aim back here. Ooh, two scatters and heat right off that point there. It's going to be one inch off, so it'll still so it'll clip them yep. once. And then... The second one will be long gone. Okay, so we got one hit with strength 10. Where is it gonna go? Nobody knows, 16 to the legs. That's a critical to a reaver leg. Indeed yep. it is. That's very good. All right, and then the next one, we can't do call shots because it's blast on four, it's maximal fire. One, uh, two hits on him, and then one scatter. I'll resolve the scatter first, I guess. D10, oh, that's way off, that's way over here. And we have two hits at strength 10 against the legs, okay. Oh no. What's the, what's the, is it plus two or plus You're three? You're at plus one still. Ah, plus one, okay, so that's 14 and 17 on legs. Move it up. So that puts, Ow. that, the devastating maxes out the leg damage, and then two critical hits put him, puts him on the last critical char, uh, bracket as well. So, fully damaged legs. One more hit there and he's out of here. And that's the uh, end of the damage control phase. So, I... End of combat phase. End of combat phase. We're on to the end phase where I don't have anybody... Did your Mega Bolters shoot? They did. They stripped one level of shield and he made the other saves. Um, His stabilizers are damaged. So he's going to go to the left from my point of view. So he's going to do a 45 degree turn. That way it looks like. And then he just, he's immobilized, so he stands still. And I don't think he, like, his C's, I don't think it matters either. And that is the end of the fourth round. It could suddenly end here. I'll let Tim do the honors and roll a d10. On a 9 or 10, we're done. We get a, a an eight, so we have a fifth round. All right, five battle rounds for me to take out this Reaver. Another <laughs> another battle round to try and take out this Reaver. We'll see, he's immobilized right now. So uh, let's do priority, I guess. Uh, I got an eight. Where to? I will, I will take the priority. For orders, we're gonna go on a first fire over here. And uh, that's the wrong die. And we get it. There we go, first fire. Just because we might as well keep that going. That's all he's good for. Yeah. You're going to go ahead and do an emergency repair. Uh, four. 
with the negative. Ah, oh, because you fixed your fix the MIU, negative, so you're good. Yes. Because I reduced it by one, but you yeah. still get the plus one. All right, emergency repairs. We're only three days. He doesn't get the server clade for this one. Uh, plus one to everything. So that's a three, four, and a six. Still, I think I still get the reroll. Oh, you might. So oh. No upgrade reroll here. It's only in the damage control phase. So you do have a four and a six. It's going to go ahead and vent three heat. That puts you in the yellow. Yellow. All right, not bad. And emergency repairs active on him. So he's either. Well, he's definitely not moving, <laughs> obviously, I guess, because he's immobilized. And then on to my other actions. Let's do, um, I think that's it. I don't think I'm going to bother with anything. Yeah, we're going to go on to uh, movement, where I guess I'll, I'm going to move stuff. Yeah, I'll move stuff. Plasma Blast Gun guy is going to push his reactor to move further. Uh, okay, maybe not. Maybe he's going to do something, and a Warhound doing it too. Okay, no, he passes. He goes to the orange, though. I mean, that's not good for him because he's got pretty high body damage, but probably not enough to die. But that's the key word there. It's probably because <laughs> he has no critical damage on it. And he's not fully compromised, but stranger things. So he gets to move 12. I can go a little bit further, but we're going to end there. And then we took a negative for walking over this. And then that's where I end with my third maneuver, but we're going to try and boost the maneuver uh, to go even deeper. Okay, and then we're going to turn. Aha! Look at that. And then you are just gonna go ahead and first fire now. We're gonna aim a quake cannon over here. Cause you still have shields, right? Correct. Yeah, we'll do a quake cannon. We're gonna call the shot with the Warhound in line of sight. So we need a five to hit. Oh, that's a miss. D6 scatter from that foot. It'll be two inches away. So it'll still be a, a hit, one hit. Uh, one avoid shield save. You are, ooh, oh, no. you lose level. Still three of them and I need to do one, two, three more hits on you to crack them. Okay. And and we're going to go to this guy and boost his movement because we're going to have to walk over that. And costs us some heat. Puts him in the yellow because he was pretty much fighting a knight the entire game. So he's not too hard off on his plasma reactor. Let's stay there because the terrain will slow us down. We just want to get a little bit closer and stay out of his front arc. And then shooting. Uh, I'm going to go with the Vulcan Mega Bolters first. One, that one's negative two to hit. That one's going to be negative one to hit. Negative two to hit. Uh, we have three hits because of the six. You still have three up saves. Red reactor, though, I think. Where'd you vent? No, I was able to vent. Do you want to push for this one or save it for the other one? Um, and, okay, you know, before we resolve that, I forgot the regular damage control phase again. This guy's in the orange, so I have to roll a d6 on him. That is a six. That's d. Would you please roll me d3 strength nine hits to his body? That is going to be three of them. This could kill him. This could end his life. These are plus two. So these are strength 11. So, oh, jeez, you might have killed him. That is hilarious, because if that was that, or any of them were lower by what, we would have been okay. But these are all plus two, so that's a uh, 14. Actually, no, maybe not. Maybe you need to roll a one. No, never mind. That would have, that would have been a critical as well, because we're at plus two. So you need to roll a one on one of those. That was a great roll. The D3 into all of the wounding was what I didn't need to happen. So that's three criticals on him. He's dead. That's engine kill. D10 plus one. That is a four. This is D6 in a random direction. Uh, that's two inches that away. So we're going to go to about there. And then he's going to fall over. And he's going to fall right where he is. But we're probably within two of you still. But he will exactly fall right there, which is within two inches. And you'll take D6 hits. And I want to hit your leg. <gasps> that's leg. <gasps> One hit! Ooh. And so these are going to be strength nine hits. I don't know if I get the bonus for flanking you or not, but... Um, well, I'm at plus three on the So it's strength. Structure. So I roll a 12 against you. It's a direct hit, which... That's, it takes, takes him out, yep. Takes him With, out. That's without the bonus at the end, because strength uh, plus three because uh, how structurally damaged the legs are. So he walks over this way. There's an explosion in the reactor. It tilts the Titan a little bit, and he starts falling in that direction, and then hits the clips the leg of him, takes him out. He's immobilized. He can't avoid it. He falls over dead. Now we have another questionable engine kill. Go ahead and roll another D10 for me here. And you're in the red, aren't you? That was uh, right in the no, middle. Actually, the yellow. Oh, well, that's right, because you vented so much heat. No. So it's just a, a six. So this is wildfire. He's gonna scatter in a random direction, and uh, see what that gets him. And he's gonna fire all his weapons. He's gonna face that guy. <laughs> he's gonna <laughs> blow the crap out of him. <laughs> Annihilates him, and then then he also does he just fall over as well? Um, I, yes, he does. He fall. might fall backwards and do damage to me because the scale is big enough. Okay, and then see which direction he falls. Because if he falls backwards, he'll hit my guy. D no, walking D six inches. So and no, 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 he just falls down right where he is too. So they also die in a lover's embrace. <laughs> He just falls on the other, like, Warhound. Oh, I guess my guy falls, too. It's a lot of dead Titans there. Okay, that's three of them. Oh, they might not be dead. They could be salvageable, I guess. Like the, <laughs> like the, and the Warlord head over there. Like, what's going on here? So in the end, we have 
Hey, I got two Titans left. Heck yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that would sound the end of the game. There's no other objectives I could go for here. I wouldn't be able to uh, grab this in the one extra turn I have left and walk it off the board, so we don't have to worry about that. It's all the armor. <laughs> Little, I, yeah, I'll be honest, I forgot they were in the game. <laughs> they got hit by an out of line of sight shot oh, from the man. Warbringer and taken out. Yo. That was, that feels like that was eons ago. <laughs> I wanted to see them do something to you. You know what, they're actually a scary unit because they have like six fu strength aid fusion shots yep. uh, if they get close enough because they have the thermal lances yep. on them. Yeah, they could, if they get into rear armor, like conceivably do, like roll a 20. Right, they're they're fast as crap too and they and they're like the uh Sarasis knights where they they're movable and they ignore difficult terrain and all that yeah. stuff so tim and i are going to tidy up a little bit and jump into a post game and we'll talk about the score there and uh what exactly happened i suppose so we calculate points and you win <laughs> the warmongers win it's it, it's because engage and destroy does uh it scores very easily so you get uh, the other one was impossible. Glory and Honor would have been impossible, though, with this guy hanging out way back here. Yeah. So, Engage and Destroy, you get um, points equal to the scale of a Titan that's structurally compromised. So, he's got a fully maxed out body, so that's six points there. And then the scale of the Warhounds are six. So, you get six points for destroying their scale. So, that's tw six, 12. That's 24 points on Warhounds alone. And then we go to the Reaver, whose scale is big enough to score 10 points. So, you got 34 points for that. That's lo that's locked in. Then the secondary gives me five points if I have at least half the scale of my Titans still alive. I do not. If you add up all the scale of my Titans, I only have like 18 or so. 15 scale of my like 30 something. Or like 40 something, I should say. 41. So I needed to have at least 22 scale left on the table. I did not. So I, I do not get those five points. We're at 34. And then for my mission, I would have gotten 20 points if I got this off the table. I failed the emergency repairs. I didn't fix them up enough. So they end up dying here, but they're within 12 of my battlefield edge. So I get 10 points for that still uh, as I brought them closer to my battle line. And then I get two points uh, for every unit that's f scale five or less that I killed. So I killed two night banners. That's yep. four points. And then anything more than that scale is four points each. So I, unfortunately, the Warlord is only worth four points for killing him. So everything else is worth four points. So it's the two Warhounds and the two Titans. The other two Titans, that's four, eight, 12 points in total, plus four is 16. So I get 26 points. Maybe, uh, I think I got to 30 somehow if, we, yeah. if I add up the, the Night Banners. Yeah. So I lose by four points. The, the, your mission was to just take out my titans. It cost you your entire mana pool and two night banners to do it, yep. but you did it. You engaged and you destroyed, and you destroyed enough to really hinder my plans over here. I didn't really kill your titans, per se, as I just trolled you enough <laughs> into melting down your own titans. I know. They all, they all, I'm, I don't even know what happened to them. You first fired the reaver down, so that was, that was titan. That was engine that kill. That was an actual engine kill, yeah. Uh, and then I think all the warhounds killed themselves with uh, plasma reactors. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, you know what? That's what they get. They get. That's what they get for pushing their reactors as much yeah, as they did. Yeah, warhounds don't like that. No, they don't like that at all. And they, the, the, their bodies are only strength 10, so even two up start doing direct hits to their body. Yeah. And then the D... Hey, heck, if you, if you rolled one less on the D, three my warhound would have been alive yep. and then you know that's that that's something too right so yeah. a few die rolls here and there that was a great game though so the, thank you for coming by and playing that yeah. one with me it's hilarious because we uh, we we got to see two titans walk into each other and kill each other twice oh uh, well my yeah. reaver yeah the reaver walked in your warlord and killed it and then your warhound walked into to, my reaver, reaver and killed it with the legs yeah, yeah. and then so it's traded yeah there's, there's just something about your your titans just kneecapping <laughs> all of my guys yeah because like, the reaver chain the chain fisted the yeah. one down took his legs right out uh but yeah the the, the ideal narrative is you stopped me from retrieving the warlord crew that you knew i was after and you messed up my face as i did it so i failed to retrieve the crew as much as i would have liked to and I lost too many Titans in the meantime, so it was a overall loss of this part of the battlefield. So that's, it, it, it is what it is, it was cool. I like that, I, poor armor just got wiped off the field right off the rip too, off the blast weapon there. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the game, that was, that was a lot of action there. And it, I felt really uphill for the Loyalists, the Warmongers. Yeah. I'm not too sure where it all went, I don't even know where it all went wrong. <laughs> Maybe it was. It wasn't like so much bad die rolling on your part. It was like too good on the uh, the mortar side, but they somehow still bungled up the mission and lost it to dummies. Yeah, I know. I know the Volkai aren't the strongest weapons in the meta. I feel like adding FAQing to add the beam rule to the smaller ones. That's nice. Kind of, was That's kind a of good nice. change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I probably would have failed more spectacularly <laughs> without that beam rule. Um, 
But yeah, it was kind of fun to see all the Volkite out. And I like the, yeah, you, you pretty much ran Volkite on every Titan. Yeah. And then you also had it on the Knights too. Not the Armagers, but the, the, the mechanical ones. Jeez. What a wild amount of stuff. I've, I've, first time I ever fought against Volkite, the, you, brought, you, you brought his Titan Legion out, and I started looking, I'm like, what are, the, are those Volkite? They look like Volkite weapons, but I didn't know there was Titan-scale Volkite weapons. It would make sense. There's Titan-scale weapons of all the Imperium's weapons, so yeah. it would make sense. They have, like, the rapid-fire equivalents. They got the, the Plasma, the Melta. Uh, now they have the Volkite, too, so why not? That's kind of cool. Missile launchers, all that stuff. Ah, it's a uh, great game. Great game, Tim. That was amazing. Thank you very much for coming by. Uh, and I got to have, well, I don't know how I feel about the Mortis rule. It seems kind of bad. The, the good thing about Mortis is that turn one move is amazing, especially for Warhound spam. Yeah. So good. Yeah. But uh, that the Reaper's tally thing, the rerolling hero is a one, or rerolling a one, maybe not so big, maybe big. You know what? It just never came up for me. So I guess it's easy to say it's weak. But then the Legio traits don't often come up that much anyways. It's just... For yours, you get to reroll the repair stuff in the first couple turns. Yep. Uh, I play a storm, which is the same thing. They get to reroll one of them as well, so it feels like you're always kind of doing it. And I guess if you're never rolling ones as Mortis, that's you're probably doing well. Yeah. I guess that's that kind of the the, the the talking point there. Anyways, folks, once you get back to your day, it was uh, took up enough of your time with this battle report. But go go watch more if you want, you know, or you know, stick around, or I'll catch you next time. You know how it is. I wish y'all some happy wargaming, and I'll talk to y'all later.